Hello guys, welcome to episode 51 of the Switch Indie Fix podcast, a podcast dedicated to everything indie on the Nintendo Switch. We are streaming the podcast live now on twitch.tv forward slash Switch Indie Fix. We are a Twitch affiliate and we got two awesome subscribers today. Thanks to Mark and Hopple for their subscriptions. They're the first two subscribers on Twitch. Um, yeah, I like live streaming on Twitch because, uh, yeah, I was just talking to the chat. We get like the instant feedback of of when I'm talking about the news or whatever we're talking about, people in the chat can comment and ask questions and I really like that. Uh, so yeah, if you are interested on uh, in watching the live stream, uh, watching me, me record the podcast live, you can do that by going to Twitch. Uh, .tv forward slash switch indie fix follow me there and you should get a notification whenever we go live with the the podcast uh, unfortunately today i made a little bit of a mix up i thought daft was going to come on the episode on this on today's episode uh and assumed he was coming on without actually asking him if he wanted to come on so it turns out he's not here because i didn't ask him so yeah it's me today and in today's episode we are going to be talking about the ninjala um delay we're going to be talking about how many units the nintendo switch has sold and we're going to be talking about if 2020 is a bad year for indie games on a nintendo switch but before we do let me tell you about our brand spanking new patreon if you like the switch indie fix podcast and the other content we create for switch indie fix please consider becoming a patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash switch indie fix uh supporting us at our one dollar tier will get your name read out at the at the end of the show a gentle reminder we need your questions if you have any uh, Nintendo or indie game related questions and want them read out on the show, head over to switchindiefix.com forward slash SIF podcast and ask them there and I will answer them on next week's show or the next episode. Or if you're in the Twitch chat, you can just ask it straight in the chat. Uh, maybe if for the people in the Twitch chat, if you could at me with the questions because I know you're, you're having a conversation. Uh, but if there's anything you want me to specifically talk about, please just at me and I'll, I'll get to it. And finally, if you are looking for a gaming community to join, why not check out the Switch Indie Fix Discord server? Just head over to switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord to join. And as always, let's get on with section one of the show, which is our news section. This week, we have two news uh, items. That's, of course, half a baker's dozen. Uh, and I, I did want to talk about it. I don't know how you guys feel about... Uh, because I, I, I've, like, split the, the news into different subsections so we have uh, our heads up we have our new games of note and physical therapy and it means I'm, I'm kind of finding it harder to actually find main news stories because i feel like most of the news stories that happen with the indie games fall into one of those subcategories so i'd like your feedback if you if you like the new the new setup um let me know and then i think if if you do then i think i what i'll end up doing is just putting new stories into um uh into the, the other sections or if you like it how it is now where we have like the bigger the bigger news stories um uh, as separate sections we can do that too i kind of like it like how it is because i like to say that how many how many stories we have and that it's half a baker's dozen um but yeah so we only have two two stories uh but we do have some heads up some new games we're not and some physical therapy uh hopple says in chat uh, that i should mention that if i get more subscribers on twitch i will play dead cells on twitch so yeah i said uh we we should set a sub subscriber goal. I don't know what yet. Maybe I'm thinking like maybe 10 subscribers. Then uh, then I will live stream Dead Cells because everyone is getting on my back, mostly Bunzi and Darth, about whether uh, about not playing Dead Cells. So yeah, if you if you want to see me play it, um, yeah, you can you you can we can try and get a, a Twitch goal for that. But yeah, moving on, uh, <laughs> we will get on with our first news story, which is Ninjala gets pushed back to June due to coronavirus. So the president of Gung Ho came out and made a statement about their upcoming game's delay. The game was supposed to come out on May 28th, but has been delayed to June 25th instead because of the spread of the coronavirus. President uh, Kazuki Morish, Morishita Morish, 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 <laughs> said, um, Ninjala is near completion, but we are significantly limited in how quickly we can work to test and finalize the game when we cannot be in the same room. Although we are working hard to launch Ninjala and its release in, uh, and its release to our fans, the health and safety of our employees is paramount. We apologize to our Ninjala fans who were eagerly anticipating its launch, and we ask for your understanding as well as uh, as we as we work to bring the best game we can can to in this additional month. So it seems like uh, it's another game uh, that has become a casualty to the 
uh, to the corona pandemic. Um, it's joined games like um, the Outer Worlds, which also was delayed to June because of the um, to do with the the the, the corona pandemic. Um, but yeah, as as Mark says in in the Twitch chat, uh, he says he, he personally thinks it's more to do with the feedback from the bit. I would agree with Mark. Uh, this is what I wanted to move on to because I did try and play the beta. Uh, I tried to stream it, but uh, I just couldn't get into a game. I played one game, which was was okay. Uh, and then after that, we just couldn't get into to to a game at all. So I think, yeah, it's, it's maybe a mixture of both, but they they can't quite um, they weren't maybe weren't expecting as many players as as they had for the for the beta, and now they're like, okay, we need to vamp up the the servers because um, yeah, because way more way more people want to play it than we thought wanted to play it. Uh, and but it also could be the thing of like, yeah, they. They're not all in one place, so I guess if you're if you're Q and A in a game, it's kind of hard to do it to send it out to people. Like I, I bet there's a lot of like security risks as well of not not having it in enclosed space, but sending it out to players all wherever they are in the world and having them play in it, and then there's like a higher risk of it getting leaked and and problems getting leaked. Um, but yeah, I, I can agree with chat here that I think yeah they're gonna use the the beta feedback, improve on it, and then. Um, hopefully make a better game and obviously you want a game if you're if you're releasing an online multiplayer game you want it to work on uh, online and you want people to be able to join games um, but yeah I just thought this was a di uh, an interesting story um, because yeah I don't know if it's like if it's genuine like I think it is but I think it's also like a bit of both and I and I don't understand why the developers wouldn't say that if that was the case um, like why would they not just admit like oh yeah we we had some problems with the open beta we we got way more players playing than we expected and we're going to need an extra month to make sure the game runs uh because of this and because of um yeah you know because of um we can't q a test it all in one place but yeah i just thought, thought that was an interesting story and i'm interested to see what you guys think about it what do you think do you think it is genuinely just because of the coronavirus or do you think it's because they they need a bit more time to to finish the game and um and make the online work uh, if you want to let me know you can do so by going to twitter at switch indie fix or joining us at the discord so story number two is the nintendo switch has sold switch loads uh -huh. did you see what i did there Yes, so Nintendo released its fiscal earnings earlier this week and is showing off some of its staggering numbers. In the last year, the Switch family of consoles has sold 21.03 million units, bringing the total Switch sales up to a massive 55.77 million. Last year's sales means that the Switch is growing 24% on year-on-year -year sales and is probably going to be even bigger this year because of the pandemic. The Switch now sits as Nintendo's third best-selling console behind the NES at 61.61 million units and the Wii at 101.63 million. It's likely that the Switch will overtake the NES later this fiscal year because, uh, as everyone knows who, who is even thinking about buying a Switch at the minute, there's you just can't buy them because they're sold out. And then Nintendo also said that the pandemic has caused some like sourcing issues with sourcing sourcing parts, but it hasn't really affected sales that much because I think everyone has been buying Nintendo Switches. So it might happen in the future that yeah the, this, these sourcing um, issues then stack up so that before Christmas maybe they'll have issues. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't think it will. Um, Bundy says my friend has wanted a Switch for the last four months and just hasn't been able to find one. Yeah. Which is crazy. So I think, you know, it might be like a short-term gain that they they have sold a lot of switches that like everywhere sold out. But in the long term, it might end up being a bit of a hassle for them and a hassle for everyone who wants to buy one. Um, but yeah, what I think is, is interesting is that the Switch has outsold the GameCube and the Nintendo 64 combined. The, the GameCube has sold 21.74 million and the Nintendo 64 has sold 32.93 million, uh, having a combined total of 54.67 million, if I did the math correctly, which it, it could be the case that I didn't. So yeah, so there's nearly a million, there's nearly sold a million more than the GameCube and the Nintendo Switch, uh, sorry, the Nintendo 64 combined. Um, yeah, I think this is a, a great story. And every time I read one of these stories, it just brings me back to, what, like four years ago when the Switch was announced and people were like, oh, you know, this is going to be Nintendo's kind of last hurrah. Like, if they get it right, then 
then they'll keep going on as a company. If they get it wrong, then they're pretty much screwed and that they'll become like a third party publisher. Um, but I guess it's just one of those things that like you see often in, in, and like maybe, maybe now you could argue it with Microsoft where in a one console generation, if a company is doing pretty poorly, then the next one, they, they really come out of the gates. So they really try and impress people. And obviously the switch has done that. Um, the switch is yeah, by far like my, my primary console now before I was a PlayStation four player. Um, and it's just, yeah, I think it's at least revolutionized the way I play video games. Uh, it's like recently, you know, I spent, uh, they're not indie games, but I spent a lot of time playing Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem. And they're two big games, which I would never have usually played if I didn't have my Switch Lite and I couldn't just play them laid on the sofa or, or on the way to work or whatever. So it definitely has changed a lot of people's gaming habits, I think. Um, Bunzi says that the GameCube didn't get the credit it deserved, which I agree with. I actually have a, a my GameCube on its way to Austria at the minute. I asked my mum to pack it up to me and send it to me uh, so I can have my GameCube to play in Austria whenever I want it. And uh, Hopple says I would buy a GameCube Mini. Yeah, I would too. The ironic thing is, is that probably my GameCube will arrive and I paid like, you know, 30 euros to get it sent here. And, um, and then the next day they'll announce the GameCube Mini for like 50 euros and I'll be like, oh well. Damn, like I just wasted a lot of money on postage, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting to see how well Nintendo has switch, has kind of gone back in the opposite direction in people's minds. Max says in the chat that people not understand how much liquid money Nintendo has. Um, that's without how much their IPs are worth. Yeah, I think people do like they they don't realize that like you know they're kind of like a dragon sat on their gold. Uh, but uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit later on in, in the episode of how I think people really like when Nintendo isn't firing on all cylinders all the time, people then get very negative and they're like, oh yeah, you know, this is it. This was a fluke, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not like, I wouldn't say I'm a Nintendo fanboy at all. Like I, for the company, I don't really care that much about. It's more like the the console and the games and like where Nintendo can do whatever it wants. But um, but yeah, so uh, it's it's cool to see that Nintendo is is selling games, uh, sorry, selling units. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens in the future, if they're then gonna revamp the the range, the, the Switch family, if it's gonna become another kind of like a new Switch and we get like a Pro Edition, or if they add more colors to the Switch Lite uh, edition or, or more uh, like variants, you know, but tie into games, that would be cool as well. I think there's so much that Nintendo can do with, with the Switch. I think the interest is still there as we've seen with people buying it now, like what, three, three and a half years after release, people are still buying buying Switches. And uh, yeah, I think it's an exciting time. And I, I, I wonder if uh, it will reach the Wii U level of numbers. Like the, the, the PlayStation just did it, I think a couple of months ago, where it peaked, it, it hit over 100 million. I, I wonder if the Switch can get there. I, I think it could do because um, like if they do, you know, make it, uh, upgrade it um if they upgrade it if they if they add new colors and that and but people keep buying it because you know it's like the nintendo ds i think if they can get it down to a, a cheap enough point people will just buy it for the sake of like oh yeah here, it's 99 dollars. here you go it has a, a, a zelda uh edition a mario edition of pokemon and then people just start collecting them and that obviously puts the numbers up but yeah, so that was our main stories this week. Like I said, only two. But we do have some heads up for you. And the first one is Game Loft is celebrating the 15th anniversary of Asphalt with a new event in Asphalt 9 Legends. The Dodger Challenge 392 Hemi Scat Pack with 15th anniversary decal can be received by launching the game between May 11th through May 31st. The anniversary event, which lets players earn a Nissan GT Nismo, will run between May 14th and May 20th. I know a lot of people like this game. So um, it's cool that they're, they're putting these these kind of, uh, yeah, like, see, not seasonal, but uh, anniversary contents out there. So if you are still playing Asphalt 9 or, or if you're looking for a good a good racing kind of uh, burnout-like game to play, then you should download Asphalt 9 Legends. It's free on the Nintendo eShop. Uh, then next up is Totes the Goat is on sale for $0.09 cent on the US eShop. Um, yeah, I think... The, the developers or the publishers are too, they wanted to give it away for free, but I think it's hard to actually do that without having these kind of, you know, if you buy one game, then, then another game from that publisher, you can get like 50% off and 50% off and eventually you have like seven games before you get to one that's actually free. So I think they were like, okay, let's just sell it for, I don't know, 99% off 
and it's nine cent. So if you are looking for a, a cheap game to to play for a, a couple of hours, then Totsu Go is there. And the final story from Heads Up is that Super Mega Baseball Free will get a free post-launch update called Custom Pennant Mode. Uh, as the name suggests, you'll be able to tinker with the mode and make custom games. Uh, so you can make matches easier, you can make matches harder, you can, um, you can I don't know, play it how, like how you want to. It gives a bit a lot more options for um, what what you want to do in the game because uh before it just had a slider like from zero to 100 difficulty but uh now i think you can you can really choose like if you want the pitches to be harder if you want uh fielding to be easier or whatever you want and senior chicken says i look like nigel formbury i don't think i do my nose isn't that big chicken but thanks for the comment uh next up we have new games of note and i'm using the wrong mouse mouse uh, so, a few new games have been announced over the last week. Uh, the first one is a release date for the narrative puzzler The Almost Gone has been announced by publisher Playdigious and the developer Happy Volcano. Um, it's available from the Nintendo eShop on June 25th for $14.99, but there will be a 20% off launch discount. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for a, a, a kind of puzzle adventure game, that's it, it kind of reminds me a lot of the, the guidance between. Like, it has this theme around this this house and uh, the art style seems very like simple but clean and uh, kind of like it uh, next up is circle entertainment and yeo have confirmed a release date for the for arrest of the stone buddha on the nintendo switch um but funnily i didn't actually write what the release date was whoops uh but i think it's um oh yeah i did sorry the next game from the developer behind the friends of ringo ishikawa uh, centers on a hitman searching for an answer to an important question in France during November 1976. It's arriving on the eShop on May 21st. Then we have Team 17 announces that Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tass Tassos comes to the Nintendo Switch this summer. Battle, build and level your way, way through Tassos with up to four players both locally and online. I like the sound of that one with the online multiplayer. And the last one up is a game called uh, Casual Cuisine, which launches later this month. It's a co-op cooking game, and it looks like a game if uh, if Hannibal Lecter had designed Overcooked. This is what it you would get. So you, you kind of play these of these like tribes of people who are trying to cook uh, cook people. Hence the name Casual. Oh well, no, they're they're. Yeah, the name's different. Anyway, yeah, but you, you're basically playing with like a tribe of cannibals that are trying to cook people. Uh, so it, it looks a lot like Overcooked. It has a similar art style. Um, but yeah, I think it's differentiated itself enough from that game to make it its own thing. It's not just a, a an obvious part. But um, yeah, so if you're interested in an Overcooked-like game, then you can check out Casual Cuisine, which comes later this month to the Switch. Then our final news stories... Are, uh, are from our physical therapy section. Uh, this is the new section that is music to the ears of all you Switch physical collectors out there. So we have um, P-Cube Indies announces that there will be a Switch physical edition of Inertial Drift and it's coming to all, uh, coming to coming out on August 7th. Uh, then next up we have Limited Run is releasing Brig Brigadine, The Legend of Runacea as a physical edition. Pre-orders for the Switch edition are open all month. Uh, that There's both a standard and collector's edition to choose from. The collector's edition includes a, includes a soundtrack, an enamel pin, and a reversible poster. Then the next one on the list is Super Rare Games has pre-orders open for Little Inferno. It is limited to 5,000 copies and even has a, a steelbook option. Then Special Reserve Games is hosting a second chance sale uh, where you can buy free titles uh, physically that were previously sold out the games are my friend is pedro Gree, and uh, metal Wolf, metal wolf chaos xd uh, the sale goes live on may 15th and finally first press games are releasing a standard and collector's edition for mulaka uh, pre-orders op are open now and mulaka if you remember is the game that i think is based on like native mexican history they came out really early in the in the switch's life cycle and uh, it's it, I think it got like quite a few mixed reviews when it came out. Uh, people were like, "Oh yeah, it's it's kind of a bit like Rhyme or Journey, uh, but it looks like really like colourful and different." But I don't know how well it ran. But usually, when they when they re-release these games physically, they they've had a lot of patches done to them, so the games actually run well. 
But yeah, so that was our news section for this week, guys. Let me know what you think the most interesting news story was. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with uh, the Nintendo Switch. How much it sold? Fifty five point. What was it? Fifty five point seven seven million in its in its lifetime. That's a nice, healthy number. Uh, are you excited for Ninjala? Did you manage to get a game on the Ninjala Open Beta? If you did, let me know. And uh, yeah, I just want to remind you before we start our second section that this week's episode of the Switch Indie Fix podcast is brought to you by the Switch Indie Fix store. Uh, if you fancy some Switch Indie Fix merch, then we've got it. T-shirts, hoodies and mugs to make you look like a legendary Switch Indie Fix fan. Interested? Go to switchindiefix.com forward slash store. Or if you are in chat, you can type exclamation mark store and that will give you a link too. So yeah, so this week I, I, I didn't really know what to talk about about on the show which tends to happen sometimes sometimes i don't really know what our conversation um portions should be because i don't just like talking about games that i've played every week uh, because I, I feel like a lot of the community already knows because you know we talk about it in discord or we talk about it on twitter so i always try and come up with a topic that we can talk about this week um in other podcasts i've been listening to a lot of people have been talking about nintendo's um it, they talk about nintendo's like lack of games this year, uh, at least first party ones, because I think this year, uh, the games that have been confirmed are like Xenoblade Chronicles, there's like the Pokemon DLC, there's the, the, the Smash Fighter Pass, and there's the, I, I can't remember the actual name, but it's the game where there's like 50 different games um, all, all mixed into one. And it, it was kind of like what I was talking about before, where I feel like if, if, Nintendo isn't firing on all cylinders. People get to be to the point where they're like, oh yeah, you know, they're getting uh, lazy and it's, um, and yeah, yeah, all of their IP's gone and we don't know what to do and why aren't they announcing it and blah, 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 blah. And yeah, what's happened to Metroid and where's Bayonetta and all of this stuff. And um, yeah, and it, it kind of feels like a, kind of like a negativity thing around the Nintendo Switch at the minute, or at least Nintendo first party wise. So I, it kind of came up with the question of, uh, is 2020 going to be remembered a bad year for indie games on the Nintendo Switch? So what I thought we'd do, or what I thought I'd do, I wanted to do it with Daft, but obviously he's not here, um, is uh, I was looking at the games uh, that are coming out for the rest of the year, and I wanted to kind of discuss, like, are these games as high level as games that we we've seen so far on the switch uh, because the switch if you remember and i'm sure everyone does is like it came out not many a lot of people are unsure about it but there was a lot of indie support uh, but i think even st still a lot of the bigger indie games were also unsure about it and have taken a while to to get ported over it's like uh, last night i played played void bastards which just came to the switch even though it's been out on xbox for a while um, I played Slay the Spire before before we started streaming the the podcast, and that's another game that came out to Steam way before it came out to the Switch, and it's kind of like um, yeah, now that the Switch is uh, is successful, you, we are seeing m many more parts of games from from other places, and I was just kind of thinking like, well, is twenty twenty going to be looked back as as like the word the, the weakest year for the Switch because one, no one knows what's happening with Nintendo. Two, the coronavirus is happening, and three, is the lineup of indie games um, that are coming out for the rest of this year any good? And I think it's uh, when we're just talking, looking at the chat. Um, Max says, "I think we will see some first party, but I think 2020 will be left to third parties and indies." Um, Punzi said, "I think we would have had a lot more news by now if Japan hadn't hadn't been hit by coronavirus so heavily." And people don't think about how hard Japan has been hit and the measures they've had to take to snuff it out. So yeah, so that's that's kind of here. Like I feel like on the first party side of things, I feel like it's always like this. You know, it's it's. I remember the year it must have been the Switch's second year, where the first year we'd had we'd had Zelda, we'd had um, Splatoon, we'd had Arms, and then there was like Mario later that year, and then everyone was like, oh what's happening next year there's nothing there's no games we've not been shown anything all of the, the the two biggest ips already have games out so we're not getting anything like that um so so what what are we going to do what's going to happen and then in the second year there was a lot of big indies there was a lot of other in uh, indie uh, first party games 
And I think that's kind of the case now. And I think the thing with Nintendo is, is like they're not traditional in the sense that they, I don't think they they share news like like uh, you know like Microsoft did last week where they said oh about a week ago tune in on Thursday we're gonna have this this event and we're gonna show you what's coming up. They're more like okay here's our direct, it's coming tomorrow or it's coming later today, and I think that can happen at any time. Like, and it's always the case if it always makes me laugh of these kind of insiders on Twitter who every week say oh there's gonna be a a, a, a direct this week. And, you know, they're always cited as being like, oh, yeah, they, they always get it right. But it's like, well, I would get it right if I said every week, oh, there's going to be a direct. Because eventually, one week, there will be. And they'd be like, oh, I'm an insider. I know, I know, I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. And I think that could be the case now. I think Nintendo is, is obviously thinking a lot about its own, um, its own employees. And I think it's, it's, it's weighing up the thing of, well, our games really as important as people's health and obviously the answer is no but on the other side of that is you have a lot of people who are sat at home bored and the way video games work or gaming culture works is that people don't want to play old games so they're like well i need something new to play and it's like you know animal crossing came out six weeks ago yeah about six weeks ago and there are people you know that have burnt through it a game that you, you could argue is meant to be played every day a little bit every day for years they've burnt through it in like a few a few days and now they're like oh well, what what do we have next and and the next thing up is is xenoblade chronicles and i don't think people everyone is is happy about that everyone's like oh well i don't really want to play xenoblade chronicles so in my opinion i think nintendo is doing the right thing i think they're probably like well we've got we're selling consoles we're selling software we don't need to put more games out right now and we want to protect our staff um and as Bunsy says in the chat i think it's also nintendo has an almost perfectionist zeal for their games they have to work well and do what the games need to do also nintendo while relying on on their consoles and games don't absolutely need them they make more money on merchandising than they have ever made on the games and yeah that's kind of what i'm getting at it's like i feel like people are still buying nintendo products and i feel like they're like well yeah we we can sit on all these games we don't need to put them all out right now be just because people don't have anything to play but yes yeah, but that's kind of like my opinion on on the first party side of it anyway because um because yeah i i just think it's it's amusing that people are how people have kind of turned on nintendo because it's like oh we only know two games for the rest of the year uh but the, the switch side i was kind of thinking like well there isn't there isn't anything that really comes to the top of my off the top of my head what I'm looking forward to this year and um and it's like I asked in on the stream last night I, uh, and Hopple said oh yeah he's they're, uh, they're looking forward to Eastwood and um Crosscode which I was like yeah they are two two games that I'm also looking forward to but other than that I couldn't really think of any other games so I went to nintendo.com uh, in the coming soon section and kind of made a list of all the games that I was like, okay, these are all good games. Um, and I, I, I don't really know how to do it. I, don't, I think I should maybe read through. I'm going to read through them and talk a little bit about the game just to jog people's memories if they don't know what it is. Um, and then we're going to, I'm going to maybe talk about like, are these games the, as high a caliber as the games we've already had on a Nintendo Switch? And if that means that this year is, is a bad year in quotation marks for the Switch. Uh, but before we do, uh, let's just finish off what Bunsy says. She says, I think Animal Crossing doesn't appeal to everyone and those who it doesn't appeal to are hammering for something for them. But true, it's, and she says it's selfish. Uh, people need to, and then Mark says, people need to understand that not, not every game is going to be for them. Yeah, that's very true. That's true. Then I think people, yeah, they do need to understand that because it's like Xenoblade Chronicles. I like, I like, I know it's not for me, so I'm not really worrying about it. Um, the only thing that's worrying me about Nintendo is that I bought one of those coupons where you, you can get two games for a hundred dollars and I'm like god I hope there's no sell by date on the coupon because right now there's nothing I want to spend my other coupon on I use one for Animal Crossing and the second one I was like oh well I'll see what happens this year and, and if there's something I want and I can use it but yeah anyway let's get on to indie so uh, first the first the, the games that are coming uh, or are scheduled for like the next couple of months uh, are spring it, it kind of goes the list i'm reading through it goes in an order so we have uh, summer of mara which was shown in one of the um i think it was the indie world or one of the mini directs 
which looks like a kind of um, cross between my time at Portia and and uh, Dora the Explorer, like the girl that always reminds me of Dora the Explorer. Then we have Ghost of a Tale, which is a kind of dungeon crawling action game where you play as a mouse. And uh, yeah, that game, that game, I don't know how that one's going to turn out. It's, it seems like it didn't look that great in the video. Uh, and But it does, I, I looked it up on Steam, it does have some good reviews. This is a question I want to ask to uh, the chat and to you guys at home. Is the Outer Worlds an indie game? This is the game made by Obsidian, not the Outer Wilds. The Outer Wilds is 100% an indie game. Uh, but the Outer Worlds, I, I have it in question marks here because... I don't know what people consider it as. Buddy, uh, Buncey says she she says it is an indie game. I would consider it an indie game because it was made by Obsidian before they were purchased by Microsoft, and it's it's like published by technically an indie publisher. Um, but yeah, people's people's opinions vary on that. Then we have Warborn, uh, which is a game from uh, I think it's P Cube Indies, and it's kind of like a it, it looks, it's like a mech um, turn-based strategy game. Uh, then we have Best Friends Forever, which also got delayed out of May because of the coronavirus. That's a game where you play as, uh, you, you have to like take care of your dog and then you use your dog to meet other dog owners and maybe find um, find love. <clears throat> then we have that Brigadine, The Legend of, of uh, Rune Zeria, which is, I was talking about before, which is getting a physical edition. That's the game I was talking about earlier in the stream uh, that looks a lot like Fire Emblem. That game does look really cool. Then we have Empire of Sin, which is a... I think it's like an e XCOM kind of turn-based... Oops, sorry. I'm just Googling it. A turn-based kind of yeah XCOM-style strategy game, which looks really cool. Uh, that's also... Uh, I think that was meant to come out earlier this year, but it, it got... Um, it got postponed so yeah that looks decent as well and then next up we have Catherine Fullbody which is the, the the famous Catherine games which were on like the PS Vita and the Playstation 3 which is a little weird yeah Bunch says Embarrassing is a, an XCOM Mafia game and um, yeah and Mark says yeah it's uh, published by Private Division which it, the devs are not publishing it Private Division is publishing it and Private Division, uh, no, no, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but Private Division is owned by 2K, right? I think that's where that's where the water's murky. That that the people publishing it are an indie publisher, but they're owned by 2K. Uh, then we have Fogs, which is a really cool game. I played it at, at EGX last year. He plays like a sausage dog with two heads, and you kind of play it uh, with like couch coat with a friend. And you have it has like these silly ragdoll mechanics, and you have to move the dog, the heads around to grab balls and put them in holes and stuff. That's a really fun game. Then we have Eastwards, which I think everyone knows about. Then Blue Fire, which was the game, which was like the, the 3D platformer, um, which was shown off in one of the indie worlds. Blair Witch, which again was shown off in the indie world. Uh, that's the the horror game based on the Blair Witch uh, uh, franchise. Baldo is the RPG that looks like it was made by uh, the Miyazaki uh, studio Miyazaki. Bounty Battle is kind of like the indie version of, um, what's it called? Super Smash Bros, where there's all these indie characters all thrown into one big battle, kind of who's the best indie indie fighter. What did I uh, I said Miyazaki is the, the director, right? Yeah, I didn't mean Studio Ghibli, yeah. Um, then Super... Uh, Super Liminal is the puzzle game where you change your perspective on items and it makes them bigger or smaller and then you use them to um, we were and you use them to solve puzzles um, and just type something then we have Eldest Souls which is kind of like a Bosch Rush looking Dark Souls with really cool um, cool art style Pixel Junk Eden 2 is like a, I, I don't even really know how to describe it. Like it's, I think it's kind of like a rhythm game mixed in with like this like psychedelic visuals and sound and stuff. Sky Children of Light is from the developers of Journey um, and looks to be like Journey again, but instead of running through a desert, you're flying over it. Uh, 
and then we have the last campfire which is by hello games Hang on, sorry i just need to write it down then we have um the last campfire which is by hello games this was in that indie world where all of these indies were shown off this was the game that i came away loving the most uh, it looks it just looks cool it, like it just looked like a lo level above all the rest like the, the art style it just looked good um and uh yeah hello games i think they've proven themselves to be a, a top quality developer if anyone if if john's in the chat he'll tell you how how great um the, the no man's skies has become since they added all of the updates to it then we have maniko's night market which has like disappeared off the face of the earth it was shown off like i feel like two years ago and uh we've not really heard anything about it since like it keeps saying like it's coming soon but um we've not really heard much about it but that was like yeah you you're on an island full of cats and um you run a night market hence the name then gleamlight this is one of bunsies um she picked it for our our indie game um draft league uh, which is like an obvious copy of Hol Hollow Knight. Uh, next up, we have the Survivalist, which is like the kind of spin-off from the Escapist, where instead of escaping from a a prison, you are trying to survive on an island. Then Quantum League is a an arena shooter where you are turning back time and using t and manipulating time to like outthink your opponent. King's Bounty Two is the one that was also shown off in one of the recent directs, and um, it like i can't really remember what the gameplay was like but i remember it looking pretty decent and it's 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 like quite an old series i think if i remember correctly let me just google it uh yeah it's quite like an old series and again i think it, it looks like it's turn best yeah turn best uh tactics kind of strategy game which is one that i i really want to play um, then again, another question mark. Uh, this one is for you guys at home to to determine. I put No More Heroes Free down as an indie game. Like I couldn't remember if it was been published by Nintendo or not, but I know the guys that usually the guy that publishes it is they're, they're definitely kind of like an indie studio. Then I Am Dead, uh, which is by Annapurna Interactive, where you play as a uh, like a, a dead person who can see through walls, and it looks like a kind of quirky puzzle game. Bunsy saying no more heroes isn't indie. Okay, I, w I wasn't sure. I just put it in because I wanted to ask. Then we have Liberated, which is like a, I think it's like a murder mystery, uh, but it's kind of set as like a comic book. Then the Red Lantern, which I believe, I always get this one mixed up with Roki, but I think the Red Lantern is the one where you are part of a dog sled team and, um, and you get attacked by a bear while you're doing the dog sled race and then yeah it's like a survival game axiom verse 2 which is a game i always forget about too that's coming out sometime this year hopefully which is yeah a, a metroidvania game the sequel to probably one of the best metroidvanias the switch has then we have cross codes which is a an rpg that uh i don't know i don't know if a lot of people know about it but it, it got like really good reviews when it came out on steam and we have Inmost, which I think is like a horror, 2D side-scrolling horror game from Chucklefish. Then Swim Sanity, Swim Sanity that, that was on the, um, the kind of funny game showcase, where it's kind of like a party game where you're swimming and having to fight enemies and shoot them and, and dodge them and stuff. Then we have Dicey Dungeons, which is a roguelike dungeon crawler where uh, everything is determined by dice rolls. Then we have Boyfriend Dungeon, uh, from kit fox where it's also a it's a dungeon crawler uh, slash dating sim where you can date your weapons then the good life which is the, the game about um a small english town uh, you play as a photographer and there's like some curse on the town where everyone gets turned into an animal at night then another big one that i keep forgetting is going to come out and which i think most of the chat is going to like jaws drop out that i keep forgetting it is hollow knight silk song Another game that we heard about last year at E3, and we haven't really heard anything since. And then the last few we have are uh, Spirit Farer, Sports Story, which is the 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 sequel to Golf Story, Super Meat Boy Forever. Maybe I don't know if that game still exists or not. Uh, Sail Forth, which was the game that got shown off recently as like um, it's uh, I think it's like a, some type of sailing game, hence the name. Um, 
sail forth. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's a sailing game. Um, and then we have Skate XL, which is trying to be like the a skate simulator in some ways, kind of like Tony Hawk's. And then finally, Deadly Premonition 2. So yeah, so there is a long list of games there. In my opinion, I think there is a lot of like gems in in this like a lot of these games look good um but i don't know i i, I when you read through them like it, it doesn't really apart from i'd say maybe the outer world um hollow knight and action verse 2 i don't think there's any like standout indies on there where you're like you would put them on a pedestal above any all the rest which i think is um could be like an argument why people don't think this year might might be a good one for indies because uh, there is only like you know three out of all of that list out of about 30 games where you're like okay there's a, a probably must buys um whereas the rest is it's kind of like yeah you know for me for me and probably for the people listening and the people watching there's a lot of games that people are going to buy there but that's because we're all indie game fans on the switch but for more like you know casual players they're probably not going to pick up um quantum league or king's bounty 2 or, or i am dead um whereas i think previous in previous years you know when they've had like hollow knight dead cells slay the spire and the gungeon and the binding of isaac like there have been these really big indies but on the other hand i guess it's just the time like like bunzi said before the, the there's not many indies that haven't been um ported to the switch and she asked the question what indie games would we want to see parts of the Switch that haven't been announced for the Switch? And it's like really hard to actually think of big indie games that haven't been. I always think that the most obvious one is um, is is it what's it called Fez, which was like one you know one of the first indie games. And Splunky Splunky hasn't been as well. And and then when you think outside of that, there's maybe faster than uh, FTL and Papers Please are also like big ones where they're kind of on an echelon above other games. Um, but yeah, like Max says in the chat, I think Nintendo, I don't know, they go for like a, a more like bookshot approach where they're like, here's like, yeah, 30 games. And for each person, there's probably like five or six games within that 30 that sound interesting and that they want to try out. And like, like I was saying, there's, there's some that are going to do less. There's some that are probably only going to buy Hollow Knight because I don't know, maybe they only like, they like Nintendo games or third party games and like, oh, well, I know Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight because of Smash. So I'm going to try it out. But then there are people that maybe are down the middle and like, yeah, cool, like, um, you know, I like dungeon crawlers, so maybe I'll get Dicey Dungeon and Boyfriend Dungeon and blah, 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 blah. And then there are us who are, I'm like looking at it and I'm like, okay, there's probably two or three games I'm not going to buy and then I'm going to get all the rest. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Isn't Hollow Knight in Smash? No, right? Who am I? No. Oh, I'm thinking of Shovel Knight, not Hollow Knight. Whoops. But uh, yeah, okay, that's a big, big fail. I did mean Shovel Knight, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I, I don't think it's a bad year for indie games when you look at this list. Like, when when I came into... When I was planning the podcast, I was like, oh yeah, this is a weak year um, because I can only really think of um, a few indie games that, that I want to play. But actually looking through this list, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about all these. I'm like, oh yeah, like there is some decent indie games coming out. Like like I said, like for me, I think out of all of these, I'm definitely looking forward to like the Outer Worlds, um, uh, Fogs, Eastward, Blue Fire, Eldest Souls, uh, The Last Campfire, Manika's Night Market, What the Golf, King's Bounty 2, I Am Dead, Skatebird. I think I missed out Skatebird. Yeah, Skatebird's on that list as well. Uh, Axie Inverse 2, Crosscode, Dicey Dungeon, Boyfriend Dungeon, Hollow Knight, Spirit Farer, Sports Story, Super Meat Boy, if it still exists, Skate XL, and Deadly Premonitions. So, yeah, it's. I think it's still a good year. I don't think it's the best year the Switch has for indie games, at least not yet. I mean, we're a couple of weeks out from when, um, when E3 should have been. So it might be the case that in a couple of weeks we get a drop from, I don't know, from whoever, from indie developers, because I don't think Nintendo's planning an, an E3, um, an E3, what do you call it, an E3 Direct. So uh, yeah, it might be the case that in a few weeks we learn about even more games. Um, but 
yeah, I I don't think it's a bad year for Nintendo Switch, or at least in indie games on the Nintendo Switch. I think people are just kind of down right now because of the state the world's in, and they're like maybe looking to Nintendo to be like, oh, okay, come on, you've got all the stuff we love, all the stuff that makes us happy, all the stuff that makes us nostalgic. Why haven't you put any out right now? And obviously, Nintendo couldn't f- foresee how yeah how the coronavirus is going to affect Japan and affect the world. So, um, yeah, but I'm really interested to see what you guys think. Um, you can let me know if you go to our Discord <clears throat> by going to switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord. We do have a, a podcast chat in there, so you can talk about it there and have a conversation. Let me know what you think 2020 is like for indie games on the Nintendo Switch. Are you like me and have a long list that you want to buy? Or are you like some of the uh, some other people that are maybe just going to pick up two or three and are happy still playing Dead Cells or Slay the Spire? Like, I'm really happy playing Sl- Slay the Spire playing it every friday on twitch.tv forward slash switch indie fix if you want to watch um but yeah i'd be really interested to to hear your guys thoughts um but yeah so that has been episode 51 of the switch indie fix podcast i hope you enjoyed it like i said it i was supposed to to do it with daf or i thought i was going to do it with daf he just messaged me um and yeah i I need to apologize him because to him because uh, we didn't really confirm it um, but yeah, uh, so like I said, please let me know what you think of, uh, of indie games in 2020 and of the news stories that we, we talked about. Um, Bunzi said that Gunho isn't a indie game, uh, sorry, Ninjala isn't an indie game because Gunho are a big company inside Japan, uh, which is fair enough. Um, but yeah, that was the episode. Um, so if, as uh, always, as we end the episode, I would like to say a massive thank you to our Patreons who are supporting Switch Indie Fix at, the, at patreon.com forward slash Switch Indie Fix. They are Benji Kong, Daniel Ward, Demiurge, MCK, Giovanni Pintamel, uh, John Review Switch, my mum, my fiance, Kool Aid Moonwalk, Rune Storm, Mark, Smack, Maltby, and Hopple, who is in the chat, I think. Um, and yeah, as Hopple just said, we do have a giveaway. Everyone's going to roll a rise at me because it's not an actual giveaway for indie games it's a a giveaway for a ubisoft game um because i saw it uh, on the shelf in uh, a shop here in vienna and i i thought it would be make a good giveaway so i am giving away on twitter uh, a, a physical version of uh what's it called starlink battle for atlas uh, it's the one with the 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 fox mcleod um like figurine in it and and also another ship so if you'd like to if you're interested in trying to win that all you have to do is go to switch indie fix on twitter look at my twin my pinned tweet and i think you just have to re retweet it uh follow and if you have twitch you can follow me on twitch as well and i'll get you like a little bonus point but yeah thanks so much for the pod uh, for listening guys i hope you enjoyed the podcast it will go up uh wherever it usually goes up apple spotify and YouTube as soon as I can after the show. Uh, please be sure to review it wherever you can. Uh, if you have Apple, that's usually the one that everyone looks for. Um, so yeah, please review it there. And like I said, if you want to get in contact with me, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at SwitchIndieFix or join the Discord server at SwitchIndieFix.com forward slash Discord. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.